Hey guys, it's Hilikas. Welcome to a podcast from The Lost and Found. Okay, today we're talking about the longly anticipated Halo Reach beta. Okay, so before we look at the gameplay, let's just take a few minutes to look at how the menus have changed and how the game options have changed. Okay, so if you head into the settings, first thing you notice is with this game they've got a much better graphics engine, and so what that means is there's loads more detail, both in the armour and the weapons, and, and the landscapes and stuff as well. So in the menu options they've really kind of taken advantage of this and let you zoom in a lot more. So as you choose your armour types, um, you can really see what the changes are. Now, as you play games, you earn experience credit, and this um, means that you'll rank up at certain points. However, you can spend that credit out, um, using to gain armor upgrades as well. Um, so you'll see here we can choose like shoulder pads or, or chest plates and stuff like that to upgrade the armor. The way that you choose your symbol as well has changed, and uh, uh, for the better. It's really easy now, you can you can choose both of these options and see what your new symbol is going to look like. So it makes it a lot quicker to kind of put this stuff together. Now the controls, the controls are quite different. Um, as standard, well I'm sure you can select the old control style still, but as standard you get what's called like bumper jumper, so it's um, melee is now the right shoulder button. Um, I get really confused already. The special move it is um, the left shoulder button and <laughs> I can't remember what the others are. It just kind of comes to me. I can't remember what the buttons are. I'll put the controls on the screen so you can see. But um, as I'm playing, I don't think about what I'm doing. It just happens. So, um... <laughs> okay, okay. So, let's look at the game options. If you jump in, now, the beta was only released... The thing is, I was really disappointed that it felt very, very limited. I knew that we wouldn't get all the options up front. I knew it was going to be limited, but you kind of had two maps and three game types and within the first few days I was like, oh really I'm still playing the same map but there's quite a lot to learn, the game plays out quite differently in that the weapons have been upgraded and changed slightly and you've now got special features so when you launch a game you instantly choose which kind of soldier you want to be so there's different options, there's normally four and you can choose between having um, speed so you can run real fast um, jetpacks, which of course everybody wants, um, invisibility, uh, which is kind of here nor there. People have got used to being able to see what it looks like when you've got your clone on, so they can still see you coming. Um, and oh, we're so speed, da 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 da. And the shield, you've got like a shield where you crouch down and put the, uh, you protected for a few seconds. The real problem with the shield is obviously you you activate it when. Uh, you're in real danger when there's like a couple of guys coming you put your shield on because you're, you're about to die but you know you're there you're frozen for about 10 seconds or something and it just gives them time to get into a better position so that as soon as your shield comes off they're going to nail you with grenades and stuff so it's not the best option like I said the invisibility is cool it can be useful in some game types if you need to sneak in and if, if they're quite a way off they won't be able to see you but when you're up close and in front of them people kind of get used to the fact that you've got your cloak on and so it's not as advantageous as I'd have thought. The sprint option is really nice um, especially for games like Capture the Flag and stuff like that if you need to make a quick dash um, then it's nice to be able to activate that and of course the jetpacks are awesome um, especially for like changing levels when you, you need to get up onto the bridge at top, uh, above or, or even Capture the Flag you know if you want to fly in over the top and drop down and grab that flag um, it's worth noting that these these features, you know, you turn it on and it starts to count down. And as soon as it's run out, it will take a few minutes to, to charge back up again. So you can't just kind of use your jetpack whenever you like. And you only get a short boost out of it before it, you'll drop. If you drop too far, you'll die on impact. So it will drop your shields down, so you have to really be careful about that. There's a little hack where if you're, you're falling a long distance, you can hit crouch just before the ground. And, um, <laughs> and that stops you getting any damage. But there you go. The other thing with capture the flag is that once you've you grabbed the flag, it's the same with carrying the ball as well. Once you've got the item in your hands, you can't use your special power. As soon as you use that, you'll drop whatever you're carrying. 
So it's really only to get you there, it's not to get you back. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now you choose this at the beginning of each match, but whenever you respawn you get a few seconds of which you can hit the loadout menu and you can re-choose what you want to come back into the game as. So if you choose nothing then it would just continue giving you the same option and you have to be quite quick off the ball in order to change this setting because you only get a few seconds. So if you're like, oh, what do I do, what do I want? Um, you don't choose then because you'll run out of time, you'll just get what you had before. You kind of got to think in the back of your mind, what do I want to be next time? Or what would make, what would give me the advantage in this game type? And that's how you kind of, that's the best way to select who you want to be. And keep changing it up, you know, you might need jetpacks at the beginning and you might need shields later on, so think about that. So when, you, when you're in the lobby, uh, the lobby is a little bit different, fairly similar but a little bit different, a few improvements. If you jump over to the player select, it's really nice, you actually get a big, big, big picture of the player and you can see all their achievements and stuff straight away without going into the menu, you know, you just flick left and right. So that's really nice. Now once the, the lobby's full and it's ready to launch the game, before they suggested one map and you had a chance to veto it, and if you, ve if you all vetoed it then you got the second option and that, you had no choice in that. Now they've improved this, which I really like, in that you get like four options down the side of different maps and different game types, and you all get to vote on which one you want. So the one with the majority of the votes wins, but it's nice to have that control over. It's not just like, do you want this or the mystery map? You actually get to choose now where, which one you all want to play. So that's really cool as well. Now they launched with three game types, and they were um, the random kind of capture the flags, get the ball, all those kind of games. Um, I think there's like three game types there, where it's four versus four, and um, the maps are quite small as well, I've noticed. Um, they're maybe about 80% of the size of the original ones of Halo 3, so they're a little bit smaller like that. And, and they're very standard kind of gameplay that you're already used to. There's also a Lone Wolves mode, um, where, where it's just, I think there's it's still for, yeah, it's still eight people in a match, um, but you're every man for himself. And there's also like a tournament mode so that you can go in and you can actually get some rank in there as well. Now, I'm really glad to see that they've just released Invasion, which not only is Invasion good, which we'll get to in a second, but it means that they're going to be adding to the beta, which is great news. So we're not going to wait till September to get more stuff. They're going to be adding new maps and new game types as we go along, which is going to be awesome. Okay, so Invasion. Invasion is a bigger map, and it's also a bigger gameplay, so it's f 6 versus 6, um, which is nice, and um, half of you are Spartans, half of you are Elites, and um, the game Reach is about on the planet Reach, so this is when Elites and Spartans were still fighting against each other, and um, the Elites are a fairly unknown new enemy to the Spartans, it's, it's a pre-game, so it's before they've learned about each other. So with Invasion, you either play as an Elite or a Spartan, and it, the elites are invading the Spartans' land and they've got to grab something and take it back. So you're playing out almost a little story, which is much nicer than just the normal kind of four-on-four -four battle. So there's a little bit more strategy now because there's more of you, and the level's a lot bigger, you know, there's a lot more going on. So we said in our last video that Reach is going to be available in three versions, Standard, the Limited Edition, and the Legendary Edition. If you want to know what the difference is between the three editions, then watch last week's podcast. So yeah, I've been really impressed with the beta. I think they've done a really good job of adding slight modifications to the multiplayer without changing it too much so that Halo fans are still enjoying the experience. Okay guys, um, The Lost and Found, in case you don't know, is an Xbox gaming website. So we do late night gaming sessions, we have weekly video podcasts. If you head over to our website, we've got like latest Xbox news and stuff on there as well. And the membership to the site is free, of course. So if you sign up, you get your own free Xbox Gamer Profile and Embeddable Gamer Card as well. So head over to thelostandfound.co.uk and join us. And we'll be, oh, we should do a late night gaming session again soon, I think. And especially with the Reach beta out. Now, our podcasts are sponsored by Caps for Sticks, which are little rubber caps that fit on your analog sticks. And they just provide extra grip. You can buy these from capsforsticks.com and they're really cheap. They're like 99p. So I recommend you head over there and then pick up a pair. Now they sponsor our podcast and we give away a free pair of caps for sticks each week. So I'll announce the winner now for last week. His name's just popped up on the screen. 
Um, and if you're over 16 and you want to stand a chance of winning a free pair of Capsule 6, just comment your gamer tag under this pay under this video. Uh, whether you're on our site or on YouTube, it doesn't matter, I'll pick it up. And in next week's podcast, we'll announce the new winner. Okay, guys, and now a few of you have been asking about Lost and Found t-shirts. And we did do some t-shirts originally, um, and they all sold out. So I've been thinking it's time we did the new design. Um, so I'm working hard on that, and in a couple of weeks we should have new Lost and Found t-shirts as well. I'll, I'll do them as cheap as possible. We're not out to make any money, so I'll do them at cost. Okay, guys, uh, until next time, goodbye. 